Hi my loves, I'm Anita Manager and welcome back to another episode of Sip and Simmer. We may all have our concerns and our worries in our lives, but during the next 30 minutes we are here to have a drink, a snack, and a good time. During this episode we'll be making homemade pizza dough, homemade pizza sauce, and garlic knots. We'll also be pairing that with a maple whiskey cider. If you would like to contribute to the production of Sip and Simmer, my Venmo is Anita underscore manager, and all the proceeds from that do go to buying all of the ingredients for all of our snacks and delicious treats. During this episode, we have our resident nurse, Greg Jules, joining us. And now, Anita Minute. I want to take the opportunity of having a healthcare professional on the show tonight to talk about gratitude. Gratitude can make a uh, romantic relationship closer, more satisfying, and encourage you to feel more invested in your friendships and even cause a more helpful and healthy work environment. Gratitude for someone's sacrifices, when somebody sacrifices their time and their energy is always an important part of building and maintaining social relationships. And right now we need a lot of help to keep our relationships strong and important. And it's important to be able to have encounters with people. We tend to feel grateful when somebody does something nice for us because we get an instant gratification from that. But sometimes it's nice to show our gratitude for things that we tend to take for granted. Something as simple as your husband taking out the garbage or somebody doing their job well. Anyone who's had their boss make a point of saying that they noticed their hard work or gotten a tip or a kind word from a customer or even had a friend thank them for doing something thoughtful, we all know how much gratitude can really improve our day. Saying thank you has a lot of power. It can help you feel gratitude, share joy, kindness with others, and even make people feel happy and smile a little bit more. So to everyone who's done a good deed lately, everyone who simply respected the quarantine and social distancing to help us get through this a little bit sooner, and especially to the healthcare workers fighting this head on, thank you. Speaking of appreciation, I would like to shout out my husband, Ann. Today is our three year wedding anniversary. Appreciation doesn't begin to express how happy you make me. I'm so grateful for you and everything you do and how you make me want to be a better person. I also want to add a second shout out for our very good friend, Alex Mann. He's an amazing friend and I speak for both of us in saying we're so grateful to have you in our lives. Happy birthday. Now, before we invite our guest on, why don't we start with a drink? For our drink tonight, what you're gonna need is two ounces of whiskey, half an ounce of lemon juice, a quarter ounce of maple syrup, and two ounces of apple cider. The first time I made a drink with um, maple syrup on the show, I think it was about two weeks ago, I thought that it was gonna be gross and sweet, but it actually adds a lot of layers to the flavors of the drinks, and I am now a big fan of whiskey with maple in it. So, I've got my shaker. And I'm going to start with two ounces of whiskey. I'm going to go with half an ounce of lemon juice. I am going to add a quarter of an ounce of maple syrup. And then I'm gonna to top that off with two ounces of apple cider. And I don't know if anybody has paid attention but you can always see the ingredients for the mixed drinks that we make in the beginning right behind me on my right or my left for you. Um, so every night we do have all of the ingredients out and I will post the recipes for you as well. All right, so I'm gonna give this a shake. You wanna make sure you really shake this up so the maple syrup gets everywhere. Okay, but not shake it so hard that everything all gets all out of place. All right, so I'm gonna get this up out of my way. And I'm going to, I'm not gonna strain it so I get some ice in the glasses. Okay, you know what, I'll keep this on my side. All right, so everybody, I'd like to welcome our guest for the evening, Mr. Greg Jules. Hello. Hi everyone. <laughs> 
So I want to make sure that I reiterate that we are roommates. We are not breaking any kind of rules or trying to start anything. So um, Greg is our roommate and he is a nurse. He is a wonderful healthcare professional. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so let's start with Please. Yes. He's not so much for being in front of the camera. He's usually behind the camera. So he's a little bit nervous. So let's take yes. the edge off. Let's do it. Oh, that's fantastic. Right? See, it's not just that is me. Fantastic. We find these drinks on purpose because they're delicious. I can't help but say, that's so good. Hey, Tim. Okay. So, are you excited to make pizza? I am absolutely excited. Have you ever made pizza at home before? No. Okay. <laughs> so, this is super, super, super simple. So, we're going to start a little bit backwards because we got a really overwhelming... Uh, uh, response yesterday when we made everything from start to finish uh, so we will be making the pizza like from scratch in front of you tonight um, so tonight we're gonna start with making the sauce because typically you want it to simmer for about an hour we don't have that kind of time so the extra five minutes will make a difference let's do it all right so if you want to grab that saucepan beautiful and in that, you're gonna put the olive oil and the butter. So we have a tablespoon of each. All right, perfect. I'm gonna turn that on. Nice. My hands are washed, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in that, we're gonna throw in our onion and our garlic. I had it in order and then I moved it. I could tell. All right, so if you <laughs> want to just give that a serve to incorporate all the flavors. So typically for my sauce that I put on um, pizza is I usually don't put salt in it because the cheese is salty enough. So we're going to skip that step. So are your scrubs fresh or did you wear them straight from work? <laughs> no, these are actually scrubs that I have for my old job. <laughs> so they're nice and clean. How's that? Nice and clean scrubs. We match tonight. How's that? Okay, so in that we are going to now put our red pepper flakes. Just a pinch, right? Yep. And then we have a teaspoon of oregano and basil. Perfect. And now, again, because of the saltiness of the cheese, I typically don't put sugar in my pasta sauce. Um, a lot of people do it to cut acidity. I'm not a fan. Um, but tonight we are going to be putting a, tea, a tablespoon of sugar into our sauce. So that way um, it will counter the saltiness of the cheese. Let's so do it. Grab that. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so once all of these ingredients have been combined, we're gonna open a 28 ounce can of whole peeled tomatoes. And we're not gonna strain it because we want that juice to give a better consistency to the sauce. So if you wouldn't mind carefully gotcha. dumping that can right in there. Perfect. And that is as easy as it gets. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to let that simmer and once it comes to a boil, we're going to take the immersion blender. So if you want to put down the spoon, we're going to move on to the pizza dough. How's that That's sound? the best part. All right, so for the pizza dough, you want to make sure that you do it at least two days in advance. The reason being, you put it in the refrigerator. Um, so it's not going to... Um, be sitting out. You're not going to prove it room temperature or even warmer. Uh, it's going to take longer and that's just going to make it expand even slower. All right. Um, so I have dough that I've already pre-made, but we're going to go through the steps of making this today. And then you're going to be stuck having pizza again in three days. I am absolutely fine with that. Okay. So I have my stand mixer over here and in the stand mixer, I'm going to put six cups of flour. a teaspoon of salt, and then I'm just gonna turn that on just to mix those ingredients without making a mess. Okay. So now that that's going, over here I have um, two and a quarter cups of water, a teaspoon of yeast, and a tablespoon of sugar. Now I prepared this earlier so that way we didn't have to wait for it. 
Now in this, I'm going to add a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, and I'm just gonna pour that straight into the mixer. I love easy recipes. So do I. <clears throat> um, this does not get any easier than that. Um, after it all comes together, we're just going to knead it maybe for a minute. Okay. And then we're gonna cut it into four and pop it in the refrigerator and pull out the, the ones that I already have prepped. <laughs> now when you're making pizza, what are your favorite toppings? I just like basil, like fresh pieces of basil on the pizza. That's my favorite. Okay. Um, but I'm super e easy. I'm not picky. So I will literally eat any kind of pizza that you put in front of me. How about you? What's your favorite? Uh, bacon. bacon. But I'm just fat like that. Oh, that just sounds Love so salty. Bacon. No, it's absolutely not salty. And with a side of ranch dressing, even better. Okay. What, do you have any like side dishes that you prefer with pizza or do you just want pizza on its own? Pizza on its own. See, I love to get like a big house salad. Fair. No, that is very fair. Extra dressing, done that before, right? Yes. And then you dump the salad on the pizza. Not a salad pizza. I want a side salad that I can dump onto my pizza and it's all sloppy and messy and oh, it's so delicious. All right, so my dough is coming together. So I'm going to turn this out, maybe, all right, so, you're pretty good in the kitchen, right? I am decent in the kitchen. Yeah? So you're <coughs> going to prove it to me. Uh-oh. You're going to do the kneading. Oh, that's fine. Because fun. I can't in this dress. <laughs> fun fact about this dress, I bought it for um, a night that I was going to be hosting at my local bar, True for two nine, and we were going to have the, I'm so devastated so, recently eliminated Britta Filter from New York City. Very sad, but we still support her. Yes, 110%. <laughs> she was going to host the evening with myself at the bar, and it was the ball gown night, and I was making this awesome like soccer ball, like big poofy dress, and then this was going to be my second look, and I had this big, beautiful applique I was going to put on it. And then we got shut down, and I was furious, and I didn't even put the applique on because I said a whole bunch of words that I don't want to say right now. But <laughs> that aside, what you're going to do is you're going to take this, and you're just going to knead it until it is smooth. All right? Got it. There you go. Okay. And you know what? More importantly, I'm going to switch our drinks. Because my favorite thing to do when I have a co-host is watch them work and have a drink. <laughs> okay. This side, we have our sauce and it's starting to simmer. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a stir. And now I'm going to use my immersion blender. If you don't have an immersion blender, if you don't want to do this part, you can use crushed tomatoes and just leave it as is. I just feel like there's more flavor when you use the whole peel tomatoes. So I am going to turn this on medium, and I'm just going to smash down into the actual tomatoes just to uh, liquefy them a little bit. Now, I typically, believe it or not, don't wear a ball gown in my kitchen when I'm cooking, and I'm not about to ruin this dress. <laughs> so I'm just going to put this right there. That's, that's how that goes. All right, now I'm going to crush the tomatoes. How's this looking? It's almost together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give this a little bit of a stir. I'm going to wipe up the mess that I started to make. And that looks perfect. Good, because I was getting tired. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so while you wash your hands, I'm going to switch out our dough. Like I said, you show gratitude, but if you have to go back and fix something, you do it. Alright, there we go. So now it is... 
good, it's nice and smooth. So I am going to swap these out for the ones that I've had in the refrigerator for three days. And they're gonna magically levitate into my hand from the floor. Perfect. Okay, so at this point, what I did was this recipe will make four uh, full pizza pies. What I did was I took one out, so now I only have three. See how big they got? And I made p uh, garlic knots. Now for the garlic knots, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it out, you're gonna roll it, and you're gonna cut a whole bunch of lines through it. You're gonna take it and you're just gonna knot them. Super, super simple. And I will post the recipe for the topping, but it gets even easier. It's butter, parsley, garlic, salt, that's it. You bake them in the oven. 400 for 10 minutes and then then you put the topping on if you do it beforehand what you're gonna do is you're gonna burn the butter you're gonna get rid of the flavor of the garlic and it's it's not gonna be good and we love garlic in this house exactly <laughs> so when I post the recipe I'll post how I usually make it when we have guests okay but I'll put the edit in of what I do when we don't have guests and we don't want to kill them with the garlic okay well we're not getting close to anyone so garlic is fine tonight. exactly <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is actually, if you wouldn't mind, can I have the uh, pizza shover in our thing? Perfect. Okay. Okay. So, typically, what you want to do is you want to either put. I always say this one. Do you know what it's called? The the semilla semilla stuff. No. It's it kind of looks like cornmeal. Nope. Still. No. Okay. Nothing. No. Okay. So you either want to put that stuff on, or cornmeal, or something on. Um, we don't have any cornmeal because if you go back a couple days and watch the episode where we made cornbread, <laughs> I used the rest of our cornmeal. So tonight I'm going to be using breadcrumbs. You just want something that's dry and that will hold it off of the pizza stone. If you don't have a pizza stone, you can take a cookie sheet and just turn it upside down. You'll get a very similar result, but also not. So get a pizza stone, they're cheap. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little flour on the board first, and I like to roll my dough out on the, um, on the board. What is this thing called? The pizza shover and everything? I don't know. I don't know. It looks like a paddle to me. The pizza <laughs> paddle. That's what it is. <laughs> See? You get some kind of education and you just know everything. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to... Just stretch this out. You don't have to worry about degassing it because you are gonna be opening it up. And I just like to, I got my paddle with the pizza stone, so there will be no tossing of the pizza. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. Okay. I think we should leave a pie for your aunt in the mailbox, her favorite pickup spot. Are we on fire here? We have a little bit of a fire happening. Oh. <laughs> That's, oh, it's still going, huh? I'm just gonna, there you go. There you go. More? Of course you waste my perfect. There you go. Fire's out. Practice safety in the kitchen, right? Absolutely. Always have something that you douse with. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is... Well, we're gonna have a smoked flavor now. Exactly, so that's it. just fine. All right, so. I stretch out the dough on the pizza paddle and I just make sure that it is all spread out and I make sure to give myself about an inch. Am I still on fire here? No, there's fire. It's just smoke. We're adding a level of ambiance. You see that smoke? <laughs> Isn't that great? It's making it a little bit more intimate, a little bit more, <coughs> you know, it's cute. So, oh, we are definitely still on fire. Well, just a smoke, but here. Nope. Grab that. Just gonna. I heard it's, that means it's out, right? We've got plenty of dish towels, it's fine. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna leave yourself about an inch around the perimeter where it's a little bit thicker, obviously for the crust. Um, so if we could just turn that fan on, that would be awesome. Pay attention to what you're doing, right? Okay, so after I have the, um, the dough to the size that I want, then I'm gonna go back in with my pizza crust, my breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs and I'm just gonna to toss it underneath. And that is just going to help it A, slide off of the paddle, and B, it's going to go onto the 
um, pizza stone, you don't want to put it directly on the pizza stone okay. because your oven is at 550 degrees and they will burn and your kitchen will be smokier than this one, okay? <laughs> All right. So, so how often do you burn things in <sighs> You know, <laughs> that's the first time that's ever happened to me. <laughs> so I've never burned anything in the kitchen before. So I I'm love a towel. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so I've got my dough stretched out here. It's not perfect. We'll call it a, a rustic pizza. It's not okay. exactly a circle. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my pizza sauce and I'm just going to spoon a little bit in. Start with less and then add more gotcha. because you can make a super soggy pizza with this. And nobody wants soggy pizza. Right. All right. So I'm going to do three. So when you're not doing home cooked, what pizza restaurants do you enjoy going to? Well, my favorite one is the one down the street from us. Uh, it's called Post Corner Pizza in yes, Darien. They do have good pizza. It, and I feel like I'm saying something like wrong. It's Greek pizza. Greek pizza isn't real pizza. I'm sorry, it's not. <laughs> but it's my favorite pizza that we have around here. It's so great. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just making sure that there's a, a thin layer of sauce here. Just like that. How about you, Greg? Um, I actually really like Fortina. Their Luigi Blanco with the black truffle sauce is amazing, if you haven't heard it. It's funny that you bring up Fortina. The hair salon that I'm opening in just a few months there is going to be three doors down from Fortina in Stanford in Harbor Point. Shameless plug. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put just straight mozzarella on the pizza. I'm not going to put any mixes or anything. I like the traditional like gooeyness of the mozzarella, and I like the flavor of it. You can add parm in and other cheeses, but we're gonna keep it old school, right? Let's do it. All right. So I'm gonna put this right here. And you wanna make sure that you don't get this on the crust because it will stop the crust from raising. Okay. Beautiful. Now, you said you were good in the kitchen, right? I said you said. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you wanna try putting this in the oven? Let's do it. <laughs> If you hear screaming, guys, you don't need to send help. Okay. So if anybody wants to uh, hit that Venmo so I can replace that dish towel one more time, if you need a underscore manager, it's in the bottom oven, Greg. I think so. Yeah. You want to look for the pizza stone. There we go. Perfect. Absolutely. All right. And like I said before, this is how I set a timer in my house. Alexa! Set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes. Can I have my drink, please? Okay, so what you're <laughs> gonna do when you um, start the process. Thank you so much. Absolutely, cheers. cheers. Even though you threw half of mine on the fire. It wasn't a fire, it was smoldering. You're gonna set your oven to 550 degrees at least an hour before you put the pizza in the oven. You want that pizza stone or um, cookie sheet to be super, super, super hot. So that way it gives you that hard crust on the bottom. Gotcha. And then it'll cook the dough even faster. And don't forget, pizza's thin, so it's gonna cook really quickly, right? So, while we are waiting for our pizza to come out of the oven, I, instead of playing a game tonight, I thought that it would be fun to ask you a few questions about being a nurse. Yay, put me on the spot. Okay, <laughs> so now it's not necessarily because of all that we're going through now. I want to know about you being a nurse in your day-to-day -day life. Sure. Does this sound cool? Let's do it. All right. So, what made you decide to be a nurse? So this is a funny fact. I did not want to be a nurse at all. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> pay attention, patients. <laughs> I actually tried to do everything else. Um, I was in pharmaceuticals. I was in culinary. I did a bunch of other things. <laughs> you were in one more time? <laughs> I was in culinary, I did a couple compositions, oh. um, and then it just wasn't satisfying to me. 90% of my family are in the healthcare field, so I kind of dabbled in it and I fell in love with nursing. Automatically yeah. just fell in love with it. I've been a nurse now for seven years, been in the field for 10. So it's very rewarding and satisfying. So what you're telling me is I do 98% of the cooking in this house and you went to culinary school? I'm still working though, in all fairness. <laughs> I get home too late. <laughs> okay, so how do you personally practice self-care uh, in general? Okay, well hygiene is huge, especially in nursing. Any type of care, 
hygiene is big. Hand washing, showering. As much as I miss my barber, also having a good <laughs> close shave. <laughs> so it comes down to that. And then also mental health is very important. Um, a lot of people out there kind of downplay it, but mental health, um, especially when you're working, it can either make you excellent at your job or it can also destroy you. So I like to point that out. That's awesome. So keeping positive, trying to be just the best that you can be so that you can be good to somebody else. How are you practicing that right now during all of this? <laughs> a lot of sleep. <laughs> and also just kind of being grateful. And, you know, we all take an oath. Oath. Wow. Oath. We all take an oath when we graduate. So, like, care for patients. So just being positive and treating everyone the same. You can't have any bias in this field at all. Okay. So aside from the horrors that you're dealing with now, how do you typically handle um, like a crisis at work? Protocols. Like a day-to-day, -day, <laughs> a day-to-day -day crisis, not a pandemic. Well, there are protocols for everything. So if there's an accident, we know who to call, next in command. And just kind of knowing your stuff, yes, please. <laughs> and just kind of knowing what you have to do, where to go, how to get help, and your resources. Hmm. Excuse me. <laughs> Got a little frozen bit. All right, so... How about dealing with doctors and other nurses? How does that go in your day-to-day -day life at work? Well, my current office is amazing. I have such a supportive staff. I work with the surgeon. He is also very amazing. So it helps make the vibe very positive and you just hope that you can be the best coworker and that your coworkers feel the same way about you. And that's basically the only way that you can deal with it. That's awesome. Do you find it difficult going to work now during all of this? It's, I'm more nervous going to work, but I mean, when you graduate, you know you're helping sick people all the time and people with all, this is where the bias comes in. Everyone comes from all walks of life um, and you never know what you're gonna deal with. So it's definitely very nerve wracking for me. Come on, but, Forrest Gump. <laughs> but we make it. Well, I think I speak. And thank you, Giovanni, for the kind words. <laughs> I think I speak for everybody watching, everybody that we live with, all of your patients. We appreciate you and everything thank you. That you're doing. Thank you. I mean, I will be expecting you to cook a little bit more now that I know that you went to culinary school. I guess you should know who you live with. I did not graduate. <laughs> well, you attended, okay? <laughs> the closest thing I went to culinary school is ordering pizza online. Look at that. Man. That's how fast the pizza is. Five questions. He's gonna grab it with his hands. Of course I am. Alright, while he grabs that one, I'm gonna keep on making this one. Because we don't like waste in this. Alexa! Turn off the timer! This looks great. Can we enjoy this for a moment, please? Hold on, let me get this sauce out of here. Okay. I'm willing to risk burning my hand so you can see how delicious this pizza looks. Alright, we that did this fantastic. in we did this in less than 30 minutes. We did this in 25 minutes and a conversation. We did it. Alright. We'll get this one on. Ooh, can I have the breadcrumbs, please? Yes, absolutely. Can I have a dust if you wouldn't mind? Yes, you may. See, this is what it's like having somebody who knows what they're doing in the kitchen, as opposed to our lovely Sienna who looks beautiful in the kitchen. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna get this second one on here. All right. So, I'm just gonna grab Go for it. the not burnt dish towel. I'm gonna get some cheese on this. I wanna thank all of you for tuning in again tonight for another episode of Sip and Simmer. A huge thank you to Greg. Thank you, and thank you everyone. I got all your messages. I appreciate it. Thank you to all my friends that are watching. We thank you not only for being on the show, but again, for everything that you do at work. Thank you. And putting yourself at risk to take care of us. And for the sake of my friend, I want you to stay home. I want you to quarantine yourself, and I want you to listen to what the people smarter than us are telling us, right? Correct. Can I also give a special shout out? Absolutely. So I got a special treat in the mail. These nice little reusable masks. Uh, my friend Ashley and Anna are making these. Hashtag 
Superhero Mass CT. I also have it on my Facebook. And it's for a great cause, and all the proceeds are going to great places. So uh, help us out. So in our follow-up post that I always do with the recipe, we'll post a link for the masks awesome. as well. How's that sound? I appreciate it. Awesome. All right. Thanks again for being on the show. Thank you for having me. And before, one more tiny little thing, because I'm really excited about this, and I don't want to skip it. Um, I will be hosting a family-friendly story time on Saturday at 11 a.m. Um, if you want to watch, you can like the uh, like and follow the uh, story time CT on Facebook. Two four two nine. If they're in here, they will post the link for you now. Um, if not, I will also include that in the follow-up post. So it's going to be a busy follow-up post, but everything's going to be worth it. All right, thanks for tuning in tonight. I'm Anita Manager, and you guys are amazing. Have a good night. I am so ready. Can I have the pizza cutter? Absolutely. Where's your FedEx? Oh, I'm so ready.